Hey, hey, y'all. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Kairos Crystal. In today's video, we are going to be talking about seven books that I feel every single Christian woman should read. <laughs> I'm not going to should on everybody, but these truly have been some books that have been a blessing to me that I just so happened to read while I was single. And this is going to be part one of, I don't even know, maybe a two or three part series, because I really have found that reading through these books um, has not necessarily, in a sense, prepared me for marriage or anything like that. But it just opened my perspective and my understanding around my single season and really having the space and opportunity to enjoy all that God had for me in that time and in that moment. So if you're interested in learning what these books are, stick around. We're actually going to get into them right now. And I'll be sure to link the description as well as the titles and where you can find these books in the description below. So please go ahead and support um, do some book studies, right? And just make this, you know, a girl's night. So first and foremost, we obviously have to start with the book, the book to read, um, whether you're single, married, male, female, <laughs> whatever. Uh, and that's just going to be the Bible. I never want to take away from the fact that the Bible has so much richness and so much depth in it for whatever situation you're going through. Like I said, it can be applied in every single area of your life. Now, the books that I'm going to present to you, they are not to take place of your daily Bible reading or your Bible studying or devotion or anything like that to God. Do that, but I truly believe that God has gifted some with a true gift of writing and speaking his heart. And so these are some of the books that I'm going to share with you today. And the first one that I'm going to share with you is my very own book, which is titled All the Single Ladies. It is Reflections on Singleness from the Perspective of Unmarried Women in the Bible. You are. I finished this book while I was single. And one of the things that I enjoyed writing about it is that it caused me to dig deep into the word of God to find something practical for my current situation. So all the single ladies, and I say it in the introduction of this book, it's not a male bashing book. It's not a man bashing book. It's not a book to tell you how to get a man. It's not a book that gives you a seven step plan on how to be content or anything like that. It is a book that gives voice to unmarried women in the Bible. Oftentimes, if you have been saved for any period of time uh, in a woman in you know church it sometimes feels like marriage is more celebrated than our singleness, right? Or than our single season. And so I, about, I don't know, five years ago, I cried out to God and I said, Lord, if, if I'm going to be single, you're going to have to give me some examples of what you want me to do in my singleness. Because the only message that I'm hearing is prepare for marriage, get ready to be married, get ready to be a wife. Do you know what it takes to please a man? Like that was the reoccurring message that was uh, on replay pretty much. And I said, Lord, you're going to have to give me an example of something else. So I'm grateful to God for this work, this debut work, because in my writing it, in my obedience to writing it, God showed me seven un women of the Bible who, when we met them in their Bible story, they were unmarried. And he showed me just the amount of significance and value and purpose that was on their lives, even in their singleness. And so I'm grateful for this. I'd be grateful for your support if you go ahead and check it out. This has been my prayer that this will be the last singles book that you will ever have to read if you are currently single. All right. So check out all the single ladies. The next book that I'm going to share with you is one of my longtime favorites by John C. Maxwell, and it is called Wisdom from Women. I have my little ticker here. There we go. OK. Wisdom from Women in the Bible by John C. Maxwell. You all. 
this is a gem. This is like having tea or coffee with like an old, you, you remember the, <laughs> you remember in the notebook, was it the notebook or Titanic? Both of them. When um, they flashed back, but it was like the older lady who was actually in the story who was doing the flashback. This is how I describe this book. I love it so much because it helped me to understand some of the stories of women who are in the Bible, but it also provided such this fresh perspective of wisdom. And it's like having a grandmother sit on your couch and just tell you the stories of how her and her girls, you know, used to be back in the day fetching water. And it, it makes the Bible stories really come alive. And it puts such a beautiful imagery on the wisdom and the lessons and the strength and the unity that women of the Bible that we see, right? If you know anything about John C. Maxwell, he is a international bestseller, world-renowned um, leader and, and servant leader. And so all of his books have been on like leadership. And so when I found this gem, I was like, John C. Maxwell, I was like, he wrote a book on women of the Bible and I couldn't resist you all because I, I have some of his other books as it relates to leadership and I just could not resist this, but I am so, 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 so happy that I purchased it. I think I got it at like a used book sale or something like that, but it really is, is life changing. And it's like, pillars of faith in the women of Bible, but it's such a relatable and easy read. So I hope that um, you'll take a chance to pick this up. Like I said, if you want something that you can sit back and sip tea or coffee with and just like easy on a Sunday morning kind of reading, this is going to be a great selection for you. All right. The next book is a recent one, actually. And I love this book. I have my setup right here. So I love this book. It is called 31 Prayers for My Future Husband, Preparing My Heart for Marriage by Praying for Him. What? And it's written by Jennifer and Aaron Smith. Y'all, this book. Now, let me let me say this, because I know there was a huge thing with like Sierra's prayer and I'm going to start repeating Sierra's prayer so that I could get me a Russell Wilson and all of that stuff. Right. This this is not quite that. Now, let me tell you one of the reasons why I am recommending this book. One is to build the habit of the habit and the discipline to pray for your husband. If you are single and you desire a husband, you desire to get married, start praying for that brother now. And I'm not saying pray for him that he would, you know, pop up, right? That he would come knocking on your door with a dozen roses. Like, don't necessarily pray that he enters your life, but pray for wherever he is in his life. When I was single, Every so often, early, early, I guess, in my singleness, right, young adulthood, the Lord would tap me on the shoulder and he'd be like, pray for your husband. And I do a quick little prayer because I was like, I'm not dating. I don't have any boyfriends. I don't have any prospects. Nobody is even checking for your girl, right? Nobody, nobody trying to holler at me. Why am I praying for me? Clearly, there's no husband to pray for, Jesus. What, who do you want me to pray for? And the closer, as the years went on, you all, this is a true story. As the years went on, God would say, pray for your husband, pray for your husband. And I had to build a discipline to pray for my husband. Eventually, I got to the place where it was like, oh, no, I'm going to war for my husband. Like, I, I would wake up and I'd be like, oh. What, what is my husband going through? Not knowing who he was, but understanding the power of prayer, understanding that our prayers reach a particular point in life before we physically get there. That's a whole other video. I have to talk about it later. So this book, 31 Prayers for My Future Husband, it shifted the narrative for me because it helped me to see 
what does it really look like to prepare for marriage, right? We're, you know, learning how to cook and, you know, keeping a house clean and doing all this other stuff. That's fine. All that domestic stuff is fine. But this is just as important for a kingdom marriage, right? Praying for your husband. So it was 31 prayers and it included everything from his decision making, his financial habits, his sexuality, prayers for me and my in-laws to get along, prayers that God would surround him with um, a brotherhood that would hold him accountable, prayers that he is saved. I mean, 31 prayers. And I had a, a friend to do this book. She kind of used it as like a challenge. And she was like, um, she was like, yeah, I'm doing it for the whole month of this. And y'all, I think I got the book in October. And I was like, yep, October one, there it is. I got the book in October. And I was like, perfect. Let's do it for 31 days, nonstop praying for my husband. Right. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful book. If you are someone who says, I don't know what to pray, or I feel awkward praying out loud, or I feel awkward because I don't have a, a man in my life or anything like that, I would really encourage you to start in this space. It, it builds your faith. It simply builds your faith. And the other thing I love about it is you can't really see it, but the authors provided a space to personalize these prayers. So you're not just praying their words, because if you have a prayer life in any sort of relationship with Jesus, you can pray what, what they wrote, but the faith is going to build up in you. And before you know it, you're going to be praying your own thing, right? You're going to, this just gives you a theme or a topic, a specific area to focus on in attacking prayer, but they provided space where you can write your own prayers. And so I love this because as you know, I'm married, but I still hold on to this book because it has some prayers in it that I've, that I prayed for my husband even before I knew him. So this is a good one. 31 prayers for my future husband. Okay. The next book is from a mile behind, learning to outrun comparison and live your authentic life. This is from my girl, my sister friend, Brianna Rostick out of Grand, Ma Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hey, Bri. I don't know if you're watching, but hey, girl. Hey. And first of all, Bri is a powerhouse. If you don't know about her, go ahead and follow her on all social media handles. I think her name is at Bri Rostick, but I'll put it in the uh, description below. But listen, y'all, this book, this is the book that is like the sister friend that's going to get you together. Like, what's wrong with you, sis? Why are you out here comparing yourself? Why are you having these pity parties? Sis, why are you up here uh, suffering from rejection? Why, you know, th this is the book that's like, going to get you together. Okay? Listen, y'all, when I was reading this, I loved what Brie did because she put prayers in here. She put even a moment of reflection because when you deal with hard topics, when you deal with topics that show you about yourself, it's one thing to have faith and to pray and do all of that stuff. But the Bible says that faith without works is dead. And so there are some practical literal things that we have to do to shift our mindsets. And so Brie kind of, compiled it all into this cute little book. I loved it because it fit in my purse and so I could whip it out and I could read it when I was at the hairdresser or anything like that. But it's depth to it because it's causing you to take a look at yourself and why you are unhappy with you. Woo! Before you get a man, a husband, oh, before, all, before you get a date, sis, before you get a compliment, let's learn how to be happy with ourselves. Let's learn how to be happy with, with what God has created, because in Psalms, it says that we were made fearfully and wonderfully. Let's start there, right? So let me read you this quote out of Bree's book. It says, um, this was the chapter, yep, this was the chapter on the fear of rejection that rocked my world. The first quote says, we have the power to resolve fear in our minds when we realize Fear is a misplaced opportunity to build our faith. Now, y'all know y'all need to get this. 
Y'all know y'all need to get this. This is for any woman. And, and we have all been there. So no shade, right? If you got to get this, buy this book proudly. The woman who feels behind in life, the woman who is always comparing, the woman who feels like, you know, you're just here. You're, you're, you're just here. You're just existing in the world. And, you know, all of the bad things that are happening to you are just proof that, you know, there's no purpose or no plan for your life. This book is going to crush that. And it's going to set you free. So I recommend From a Mile Behind by Brianna Rostick. All right. The next book. One of my, y'all, I have lost this book, I think, twice. And I had to go buy it twice. And then finally, my godmother gave me her copy. And I'm cherishing it with everything I have. It's called <laughs> Women of the Bible. That's simply what it's called. It's a one-year devotional study of women in scripture written by Ann Spangler and Jean E. Swerda. Swerda. I think I said that right. This is the gem. You, oh my gosh. Y'all don't understand. This is a gem. This book First of all, if you don't know anything about Kairos Crystal, I love studying women of the Bible. That's just how God deals with me, right? That's just how God speaks to me. That's how, you know, that, that's how God loves on me and, and builds up my faith. And so this book has, oh, I don't even remember. Oh my gosh. It has, I don't think it's all of the women of the Bible. But it's, it's very, very close to all the women of the Bible. And it's broken down day by day. So this really helped me to build a Bible study habit, a devotional habit of every single day. I'm spending time in the word of God. This just made it something that I was truly interested in, right? We wasn't studying, you know, I don't know, the begats, <laughs> right? We were studying the begats, but we were studying real women. These are our sisters in Christ, right? Well, the ones who, you know, yeah, we get there. But studying real women, and I love this. I still use this to this day, y'all. If the Lord in prayer will tap me on the shoulder, he'll be like, you know, Rispa. I'll be like, who? <laughs> who? Who? Or, you know, it'll be like Lydia. I'll be like, who? Who is that? Who is that? Am I supposed to be praying for Lydia? And uh, I'll be reminded to go pick this up and just dig into the women of the Bible. It's so rich, you all. It's so rich. I can't even begin to share it all. But there's something for every single day. And it's one of my favorites because it has a section where it says, like, do you see yourself in this particular woman? And I love that because it just makes the word of God become so much more alive. All right. So. Women of the Bible, a one-year devotional study of women in the scripture. You are not going to be disappointed with this at all. Okay? I think I have two more. Okay. <sighs> Y'all, I've had these books for years. I have had these books for years. Having a Merry Heart in a Martha World. Woo child. I think this was the first book that I truly, truly, for real, for real, read cover to cover. This was a book that I could not put down. Let me tell you why. You you have to, you don't have to know the story of Mary and Martha, but this renewed my desire for an earnest relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about, you know, that I just go to church because I know it's the right thing to do. No, this was when the world shuts down because of a pandemic and I can't get to church. I know that I got Jesus. This was this book. Um, let me read to you just a little bit of the back cover. It is an invitation for every woman who's ever felt she isn't godly enough, isn't loving enough, and isn't doing enough. So if you are the woman that struggles with perfectionism, if you are the woman that struggles with 
comparing yourself because you see all these other folks doing everything and all these YouTube influencers doing this, doing that. Start here. Start here. It's it's a relatable, easy read. It feels like it 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 feels like your therapist's office, probably. <laughs> right. Um, but I loved it. There is a 12-week companion Bible study guide. Now that I think of it, I've never gotten the Bible study guide because this this is a lot to process on your own. And it really just sent me head over heels in love with Jesus. I read this early in my salvation, um, but I, I come back to it often because we need to be reminded of, of this, that it's not about doing. It's not about doing. Our relationship with Christ is not about the works, right? Um, but the faith that we have in him. So having a merry heart in a Martha world by Joanna Weaver. All right, last one. Whew. Single. That's me. Well, that was me. Some of you all. Married. That's me. Separated and life after divorce by Dr. Miles Monroe. This says it includes, yep, an interactive workbook and daily journal. I don't know if I had that part, but I, if I can show, this doesn't show up the best. But when you all, when I say, look at those highlights. When I say an easy read, I'm going to have to pick this back up because now it applies. Look at, look at all of these titles, single, married, separated, life after divorce. It applies to so much. If you don't know Dr. Miles Monroe, you're sleeping, sis. You're sleeping. Dr. Miles Monroe was truth. Absolute truth. He has since um, gone home to be with the Lord. But this is one of those old books that is a treasure. It is a treasure. I remember reading this book and this was one of the books that helped me prepare for marriage because I could see it all in one spot. Right. Um, but I remember reading this and I was drawn to read about those who were separated and even life after divorce. And it cultivated just a compassionate heart of prayer and intercession in me. But it also what it also does is helps you to understand others perspective. Right. So as you are dating or whatever it may be, you may come across a brother who, you know, has been divorced or who is now a, a widower, I believe it is. So this book gives so many different perspectives through a biblical lens. And I love it because you can find Dr. Monroe pointed out the um, the beauty and the value in each one of these categories, if you will. So um, at first I was skeptic because I was like, oh, it's, it's just labeling and putting people in the box. But he really did a beautiful job pointing out like what the how God gets glory in each one of these areas um, and, and tugging on the heart and mind of God as it relates to wherever you find yourself. So this is no matter what state you're not what state, no matter what state of mind you are in, I believe that this book will be a blessing to you in either way. So, and then, hello, the Bible, y'all. What, Whatever version, okay? Whatever version, just make sure you got you a good Bible book. So that is today's video. Listen, I want you to visit the links that I'm going to put in the descriptions. Make sure you go buy these books, audio book, however you got to do it. Make sure you go buy these books and um, take a listen to, to some of the rich wisdom and just encouragement that I have received from them. OK, listen, leave me a note in the comments. Let me know. Have you read any of these books? What other books do you suggest single Christian women read um, while they are single? I want to know, and I'll probably do a review and go grab a copy myself and read them um, because I think there is a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom to be gained. So listen, ladies, I love you all. Thank you for rocking with me today. Stay tuned for part two of books that I feel like every single woman should read. And remember, you are blessed, beautiful, and loved every single day. And God has not forgotten about you. See y'all later.